Thank you, honey. You just made my day. <laughs> Whenever you're in trouble, you just went to Danny. You know, you, you, I, I, most of my scripts, actually, they featured Danny a great deal because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a comedy writer, and I knew he, he could deliver. I knew my name was in the title of the show more than half the time. The show was called Danny Has a Girlfriend. Danny goes on a diet. Danny grows up. I got that, and I'd count the lines. So there one, two, three, four. I'd have 72 lines. David Cassidy got 54. I'm the star of this show. You know, and I was not shy about saying so. Listen, when you're in show business, you gotta work all the angles. <laughs> Paired with comedy veteran Dave Madden, TV had a new dynamic duo in the making. You members of some flaky religious group? No, sir. I'm here to represent the partridges. The birds? <laughs> the family. The relationship he had with Danny Vanaducci was remarkable. I mean, I talk about that a lot because uh, to have that little red-headed scamp and somebody like Dave Madden, you know, it was uh, W.C. Fields and, and, the, and the kid, you know, and it was it really worked for the show. That's where the humor was, and it was fun. Danny, if there's anything you want to know about handling women, you want to get it from a real pro. You know who to ask. Yeah, but I already asked Keith. He was no help. I was talking about myself. Mr. McCaid, I know you're trying to make me feel better by making me laugh. Bless you. While Danny played for laughs, his older brother played up his good looks. David Cassidy was becoming one of the hottest young faces in Hollywood. But Keith Partridge had to remain believable as an average teenager. We found things also for, for David that made him, you know, a little flawed, you know, because otherwise he was a perfect kid, you know, so we sort of made him rather vain and uh, things like that. guy he was the one that something always happened to he wasn't perfect she knows <laughs> by having um, two dates for the same party and not knowing what to do he wasn't perfect you know by his car always breaking down and having no money to go fix it he wasn't perfect because um, on the exterior he was so they really had to make him on the interior a little less perfect of a character or I don't think the audience would have embraced him as much as it did That's her. what do I do what do you usually do with girls in love with them? Oh, Lori, you have a dirty mind. She's 11 years old. <laughs> Susan Day had been chosen for her looks, but the show's creators were determined to highlight more than just a pretty face. I thought we were doing fairly well with Susan because she was uh, a woman's a liver, you know, a high school woman's liver and stuff like that, which was kind of fun to do in those days. It's nothing now, but uh, I don't know that it is nothing. I still think there's a lot of women around who who th would think that, that that character was way out in front. And it'd be a groovy way to find out exactly what's wrong with this country. What? Well, I'd be able to see all the injustices firsthand. And look, kids. It was the first time that we saw young women be so politically proactive. And realistically, we needed to make that a part of the show. I've been thinking about these lyrics. Yeah, what about them? Well, do you think they're really relevant Relevant. One lousy sit-in and suddenly she's Joan Baez. And Shirley Jones was being hailed as the most liberated mom on primetime television. Shirley Partridge was the first working mother in television. She was a completely independent woman. She was uh, guiding this family. She was their manager. She was their caretaker. It was a way to kind of reassure mothers, I think, around the country that you could be a strong mother under any circumstance. Never thought I'd raise a quitter. Who's a quitter? You are. Danny, most things in life that people want aren't just handed to them. If you really want something, you have to keep trying. You mean I should fight for Gloria? That's exactly what I mean. Shirley Partridge encouraged her children's talents, respected their individuality, and truly seemed to understand the trials and tribulations of being a teenager. Mom, did you just tell me the facts of life? Kids across America longed to join her brood. Cold hands and warm heart, I'm up. I had young teenagers come and camp on my lawn in Beverly Hills, take a bus from Iowa and get to California and come and sit on my lawn. We want to live in your home. 
We want you to be our mother. We want David Cassidy to be our brother, you know. And it, that happened more than once. And uh, I would have to bring him in the house, find out where they lived, call their parents, give them fare to go home, you know, and tell them that this was fantasy. This is not reality, you know. So, but that, that was kind of the sad part of it. You know, kids would runaways and uh, they wanted to live that life. I think what's most believable about the show is just the connection between the family, just the, the obvious affection they all had for each other. We were the family next door, yes. They went to school and they did their homework and I did cook, you know, I did have the roast in the oven. But we had that extra thing where we, we had to earn a living and we were out there earning a living together. So we got to see each other on different levels and, um, and I, I think that's what made it friendship as well. In other words, you know, they were, we became friends, and that's what you saw, too. Occasionally, the line between friendly and familial got a little blurry. Shirley, every now and again, got completely sucked into being our mom. I was misbehaving one time. I'm being some kind of jerk. I'm 10, and I'm, I'm a jerk by nature. And Shirley starts getting mad. And finally, she looks at me, and she goes, Danny, you go to your room right now, and you stay there till I say so. And I just look at her like, you've lost your mind. A, I'm not your actual kid, and B, there's no room up there. That stairway doesn't go anywhere, Shirley. It's fake. The reality of a show built on the fairy tale of domestic harmony was questionable. But the actor's amplified fame was not. The Partridges had become bona fide stars, and swarms of screaming adolescents followed them everywhere. I knew we were famous because there was no missing it. The part family just, it, it exploded. I mean, there are shows that have run lots longer and more people have watched, but there wasn't the same superstar power that the Partridge family had for, for screaming fans. There was pandemonium, people freaking out and fainting. But the real breakout star, complete with puka shell choker and hipster shag haircut, was David Cassidy. Literally overnight, he became the teen sensation, surpassing the popularity of It Boys, Bobby Sherman, and Donny Osmond. 